Here we go. Let's see. We just did the ending where we picked up the phone. We can try to go back and unplug it. Stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. You trying to bait me again? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. Toying with my to feelings. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. That's so cinematic. I love that, actually. But no, I know you're a lie. Give me Mariella. I don't want this wife. I want, I want Mariella. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, he's got the papers again. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. You're lying. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. Oh, God. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. God. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Ew, that's or like a fly burger. he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find <laughs> yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought then provide an excuse Fart? why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. My goodness. Excellent. <laughs> Making choices on a regular basis is oh. the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome oh God. back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. You're lying to me. You're a lying scumbag. I know this. I've been with you for quite a few hours now and you've, you've never been good to me. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. 
We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Home being my cubicle room? Okay, well, thank you. But what if I... Oh, he took away the plank. They're very careful to baby-proof this place. I can appreciate the effort. We going back again. Why Almost is there a cup there. on the floor? You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. You know, he said it doesn't make sense for the main character to die in the middle of a story, but it makes sense in the beginning of a story, as a plot twist, or at the very end, as just the conclusion. Now I'm scared. <laughs> now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. We've come too far to listen. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Uh... Oh! One, two, three, something? One, two, three, oh, one, two, three, question mark, one, two, three, question mark. Four, five, six, B. Four, five, six, B. That looks like a nice sticker. Okay, okay, fine. Oh, it's oh. ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Oh, oh it looks really cool, though. Oh god, this reminds me of the skip button ending. Oh, up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. I did. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. When a creator makes something and they send it out into the world, can they still control how people choose to consume the thing they made? Like if you make a story-based game and then the player decides, I don't care about the story, I'm gonna skip every single cutscene and just do the, the gameplay parts. Yeah, I, I would imagine that is vexing for some creators. Or maybe even like um, a musician. They play a piece, but somebody decides to listen to it at double speed. 
or maybe someone's even watching this video right now in double speed. Is that something that creators should get mad about? Mm, I personally feel like once you put it into the world, then that's just that. You can't really control how people choose to engage with it. You might not like it, but there's nothing you can do about it, so... No point in thinking about it. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, oh. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Wait, are we just doing it normally now? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. That's okay, because I was thinking we could try the escape route without using the bucket, which would be... Ah, oh, wait. This computer should be the one that has the input. Oh, yeah, no, we're still in the... Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Oh, God. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. <laughs> he had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Nightshark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. You can't make me speak. I'm not Stanley. I'm a real person pretending to be Stanley. You can't. You can't make me. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver, right there on the wall. Somebody mentioned that in the Switch version of Ultra Deluxe, apparently this painting, the hand, is replaced by Mario's I'm head. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver, otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. I haven't seen a picture of it though, so I don't know if that's just fake spoilers or what, but the thought of okay, it- Okay, fine, you're not gonna <laughs> do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When oh, God. ...to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his ah, left. This is the variation on the out-of-the-body one. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. Thank you. you. walk through the door? Thank you. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Creation without a consumer just doesn't work. Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. He sounds so sad. Oh god, what now? Are we not done? Oh, it's just a variation? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Welcome to the whiteboard ending. Dog mode. Oh! I've never s Wait, have I seen this before? Oh, this is... 
Oh. Yeah, I guess it's just an alternate. Stanley went around touching every little <laughs> thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. Wait, I had a new thought just now about the ending that we just saw. Yeah, by the end there, the narrator was really sad that Stanley wouldn't engage. And I think that just goes to show that without, um, like a creation needs an audience, but you can't really force the audience to do what you want them to do, to react the way you want them to react in. It's a tough one because you put your creation in a public space because you want the audience. You're trying to convey something with your creation and you want that message to resonate with the people you're sharing it with. But what if somebody doesn't get the message or they get a different message? Again, I can easily see some creators getting very upset about that sort of thing. But at the same time, I'm thinking about book authors when they write a literary passage. It's kind of cryptic, and maybe a reader will come back and be like, Oh, Mr. Author, what did you mean when you wrote this line? And I feel like I've seen quite a number of authors being like, you know, not wanting to tell you outright what it is, because what's important is what you take away from it, right? Not necessarily what I'm trying to convey to you. If you come up with a completely novel thing that the author never even thought about, is that wrong? I don't think so. Kind of like the whole the curtains are blue thing. Like, oh, this is supposed to be a metaphor for the depression the main character feels, but even if the author doesn't intend it, and someone reads it like that, is that a problem? Maybe one way to think about it is the, the creator and the consumer together are creating something new by having this sort of exchange, right? I don't really like the idea that there is only one set way to enjoy a thing, even if it's like the way that the creator intends it. Let's say in the skip button ending, I've seen a lot of people say stuff like, oh, you know, people who don't Stanley skip what the narrator says are, doors, you know, they're playing it correctly. But if somebody played it and they skipped immediately every single time the button became available, who is anybody to say that's not a valid way of playing? You can say yeah, that, you know, that's not how you would play or you don't agree with it, but it's a completely valid Stanley experience, Stanley especially if they enjoy their time with it. Office, hey, they like the Stanley Parable, this is how they like Stanley playing. Who is anybody to, to say, no, office. you're wrong, you can't do that? Here we go. Okay, we can try escaping this time. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Did he always Shocked, say manager? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief. Stanley was in such a rush to get through <laughs> the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Sorry, I'm really sorry. Did he always say manager though? I thought he always just said boss. My boss's office. I mean, my, my boss is my manager, but... This doesn't seem like a manager Feeling suite, you know? And rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. So this is the one where when we had the bucket, we got taken to the Bucket Museum, and then we came close to getting crushed by the, the compressor. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Sometimes you need someone to show you there's a possibility of a thing before you even realize that it's Stanley possible. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. No. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. No. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. This sounds similar, the exact same as before, and we're gonna get plopped down right in front of the compressor. But this time without Bucky. No one's gonna save me then, because they wanted to save Bucky, didn't they? But not me. Oh god. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. 
He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plucking the eyeballs from a blind man. Ew. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. No, 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 don't do this to me, narrator. No one's gonna play your game. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. She saves me every time. Thank you, I guess. I'm gonna assume you're Mariella. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death <gasps> becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Again, going back to the whole existential crisis. What's the point of living if you die? Ma computer. Office layout. This blueprint shows the office from the beginning of the game. The path from Stanley's office to the two doors was the first part of the game that was built. Sections have been added and altered throughout development, though the core layout remains almost identical to the first iteration. And not only do I have a room, my cubicle is bigger than everyone else's. Either I'm special, or they're just trying to stuff me away in a corner because I'm a really, really bad employee. Oh, wow. Corridor. The pacing of this opening section was important to get right. This corridor has been moved and altered to make sure the player reaches the two doors in a good time. A lot of things that we'll never think about as players, but it's probably gone through a lot of iterations. The two doors. The set of the two doors was the very first concrete piece of St the Stanley Parable's design. Once this room was created, the rest of the game emerged as an extension of it. An exploration of the contradiction this room posed. Oh, I feel at home just looking at this. The office. I've never seen one, two, or three. I don't think. Button sounds. A selection of the sounds used throughout the game when buttons are pressed. Each is a mix of a keyboard stroke and a synthesized tone. Wait, the dog mode. I checked it earlier. Was that the dog mode? Wait. Oh, the dog is me. <laughs> it's not a keyboard sound anymore. Okay. Makes me feel less lonely, especially without Bucky. Filing cabinets that are not closed. Office computers with the employee database or solitaire or installation, installing Chart Pro 2.01. Credits. Davy Reedon and William Pugh. Yeah, we uh, we talked about Davy Reedon a lot before, but William Pugh was also um, a very big part of the Stanley Parable. He went on to make another game I've played on the channel before. Uh, what was it called? The Dr. Langeskov? I forgot the full name because it's really long. Something about the stealing the emerald and... It's a similar style though. Yeah, like a meta, meta commentary sort of thing. Credits. Cool people who worked on the game. Based on the work of the Stanley Parable 2013 team. Oh, so these are updated. Cool. Stanley character skin. <laughs> the office. The maintenance room. An early version of the maintenance room, which looks a little bit more bare than it does right now, but still pretty similar. What about over here? Can I run? I don't think I can run. Boss's office. Screens from the development of the boss's office. Oh yeah, I love the red... The red wallpaper really... seals the deal. Yeah, it just makes it stand out so much more. Even the green earlier. Like, these walls don't look complete. No. Oh, 
office clock. There's too many ways up, man. You pick up on intuitively if you have even the most fundamental understanding of good and bad games. The lounge. Underground. Oh, now we just have a cardboard. I'm just gonna make paper. this easy on you. Stanley jumped in the river. When Stanley came to the lift, narration outtakes. Kevin Brighting, the voice of the narrator, the recorded dialogue the for the entire game roughly three separate times over the two no, years of development. Clips sure from early takes that are not used in the final game. To where he was supposed to be in the story. Three times. Stanley pushed. I imagine voice acting is um, it's kind of a tough one because you have to basically finalize the script before you do that because you can't really change it easily. But in a game like the Stanley Parable, where it lives and dies on its voice acting, the words in the voice acting, that's gonna be tough. Freedom Ending. The very first incarnation of the Freedom Ending in the game's alpha. Countdown Desk. I don't even know if I know this one. Hey, these monitors look newer. Freedom Ending. As it existed in beta. Monitor room elevator. For a time, you could have gone up, but we abandoned it when players found it too difficult to remember what was up and what was down, <laughs> and placed the two endings together instead. Uh, understandable. Sounds dumb, but sometimes that's just how it rolls. You gotta play, you gotta design the game for the lowest common denominator. <laughs> countdown room. Early version of the countdown room. Oh. Yeah, escape menu. For a long time, we had an ending that only ended when the player restarted from the escape menu. Unfortunately, very few players realized this was what they were supposed to do, which was frustrating for everyone. Yeah, that's the old one. This is the sequel. Yeah. Is ending? It's cut. It's been cut. Kind of reminds me of Portal, especially that gigantic red button. Zending model. The fourth version of the ending, but it was abandoned and changed shortly before launch. I don't even know which one this is. Buttons everywhere. Zending levers. Ooh. Trailers. We ran four major teaser trailers over the course of the game's development, each meant to convey something about the spirit of the game. This is the first one released in May 20... Oh my god, it's May right now, but 2022! Oh! It features a series of broken rooms and the voice of the narrator informing viewers that he is repairing a new version of the Stanley Parable. In recent memory, a more meta sort of game that I can think of that I played would probably be Inscription. Yeah, if you watch some of the Inscription trailers, they also had like, um... some interesting things going on there. I know for the Ultra Deluxe, they made some trailers with scenes especially for the trailers, just to not spoil the Ultra Deluxe, which is a lot of dedication. Hats off to them. Meeting room, the projector. Maintenance layout. The flow of hallways following the first two doors was important to get right, like the rest of the game, since players will replay them so often. Ultimately, the simplest version won. Oh, the confusion ending used to be just off in the side like that. Yeah. The other entrance would be hidden depending on how you entered. Mm. There's no vent that we know of that goes to maintenance. So I guess in the end, I... This is the one that won out? Looks like it to me. Okay. So much design work. You think it's mostly just the voice acting and the dialogue? No. The level design. The apartment timer. In a previous version of the apartment ending, a timer would give you 15 seconds to pick up the phone. Not picking up the phone would lead to a different ending. Oh god. The cargo lift. Second version is functionally the same as what's in the final game, but we wanted it to look more like a place where cargo was actually stored. 
Yeah, this gives why it feels like the portal is because portal has a very what do you call it? Like um clinical no, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Like a sanitary concrete building sort of feel. The cargo lift was always intended to offer the choice of staying on or jumping to a different path. However, after this early version, we decided we also wanted the option of the player falling to their death. Ain't that nice? The office. Oh yeah, trusty pencil sharpener, who also attended my intervention. The lounge. Yeah, yeah, the colors really pull it together. <gasps> Money! Money! Somebody's watching the Stanley Parable on their computer. No. Early in development, we designed an ending where Stanley would end up on a battlefield fighting aliens. The action game would become sentient and would wage war against the narrator. We realized shortly after starting to build it that it was far too jokey and on the nose for the tone of the game. Plus, some people interpreted it as making fun of people who like shooters, <laughs> which was not our intention. It's fine. It, it, people who play shooters aren't... they're not real gamers anyway, whatever, just, just make fun of them. I say, as the top most played game in my Steam library is TF2, okay? Alien base. Awesome alien base. Uh huh. What do the lights in the control room do? I really want to know. Emails? Narrator emails. After the second trailer we sent out, we asked people to email the narrator for questions. While we had initially planned to use these further promotional materials, we never found the perfect use for them. <laughs> what is your message for today? <laughs> I can't imagine how many stupid. I'm sorry, uh, how many, um, thought-provoking questions they received. Oh god! Oh god, that's- that's horror, that's true horror right here. <laughs> I love the... the apostrophe mark messed up. Capybaras are bigger than I imagined. Like, I went to an aquarium once, and I don't even know why capybaras were in the aquarium, but they... I thought they were kind of like, um... the size of a guinea pig? But no, they're like... five guinea pigs, at least. Different offices? From left to right, the iterations. Oh, so originally my desk was normal-sized. And then it got bigger. And... Oh, this is pretty similar, but the some of the drawers are open, there's an extra shoebox. For some reason, I've elected to put the light on top of the cabinet, as opposed to the desk. Okay. <laughs> Game design mock-up. The level that William, the level designer, sent Davy, the writer, as a kind of audition piece. The strength of this level got William hired to design the full game. Though much of the environment has changed, the basic layout of this mock-up is still in the game. Mmm. Dude, where are we? Oh yeah, the exit. <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Who are you? Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. It's like a toxic relationship. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. She's talking to me directly. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let <sighs> Thankfully, every time I die, it's actually just Stanley who dies. I'm okay. I'm not dead. Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. 
Hey, the subtitles were wrong. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. <laughs> nor did it advance the story in any way. Okay, we just need one more. So I think now would be a good time for us to visit the blue door. I know I talked about it a long time ago, still didn't get to it. Now is the time. Because I think that's... Yeah, we're getting very close to even clearing Stanley the original endings now. Two open door. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was grand, majestic. It's, it's different again. Perhaps too majestic. Like a combination of a much smaller version and a much larger version of this exact room. What? It all made Stanley uncomfortable, and he started to bleed a little. Oh, this God. Made him smile. At last, proof that he was human. I bled from the uncomfortableness. But eager to get back to business, Lord. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Oh, after seeing the museum, all these paintings. Stanley was so bad at following directions. I wish they had new stuff for the new, like the balloons and the new material. Didn't seem like that was updated. The updated stuff is inside the Look, Stanley, I think expo, the sequel expo. Foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Some what? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? No, Are no, you that no. Are convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Hold Why? on. I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. No, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. No. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. He has the ability to teleport me. Why do I even bother? I still don't think we're communicating properly. <laughs> Stanley walked through the red door. Ooh, colored subtitles. You should do that more often. It's good for accessibility options. But okay, I guess we gotta do it. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying Wait, to get did I miss somewhere a blue that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Did Don't I miss a blue door? It's killing us it stone? seems like it's the same as before. I, just, I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Oh no, there might have been a blue door I didn't realize because we're doing the red ending again, aren't we? I think we are. Hmm. What do we want? Oh no, what okay. In that case. Hmm. No, in that case, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna end here then because I'm pretty sure this is not the right thing. But now that I've begun the game again, it means I can do this. And I can't wait because if I wait. Oh. Welcome, Stanley, to heaven. That's it. That's the ending. I do remember I ended my original playthrough with this ending. It's very... Oh! Would you say zen? I don't know, this is, um, kind of feels like I'm praying at a church or something. <laughs> We can turn off all the buns. Man, this is... Yeah. But I, I think that's it. This is it. <laughs> There's not actually too much here. Okay. We begin again. Blue door. Blue door. door. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red oh. door. It was behind us. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. I... I won't. You see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map, because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed hey. developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. 
and in the end it was all for nothing, because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Flying? Tell you what, let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. <gasps> a third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Oh, I love the orange. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. This is the baby. Now, tell me about your experience this with this This is the baby version. one. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Okay, one and five are useless. That's not actually feedback. That's just blindly telling people, oh, I really love you or, oh, I really hate you. So I'll, I'll say four. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Clearly, there's something here that speaks to you. If I can be honest here, I really don't have any idea where I'm going with this. This whole third door thing was just a stab in the dark. But I guess you're into it. So let's keep this party train rolling. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. This is what they call emergent gameplay. The Stanley Parable Worldwide Leaderboard. Wait, are you going to show my friends again? Those are my friends, right? Are they my friends? What? People? You guys finish a game in like 10 seconds? 21.3 players skip the intro. I skipped it every time. <laughs> 9,000 out of like a million people on the planet. Hey, maybe. Oh, okay. I mean. Hey, the only direction I can go is up. I wonder if these are actually real. Oh. It just said, why not ask your friends for help? Oh, but you're, you don't have any friends. A dead rat is better than me. <laughs> hey, but this is this is interesting. This is um <laughs> Yeah. Compete against others to improve your Stanley Parable career. Yes, yes, this is emergent gameplay or something. Stats, achievements. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. I don't know, man. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this oh, game, God. the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. <laughs> so why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. You know, four hours in the grand scheme of things is actually pretty dang. It's a short game. I would enjoy a four-hour game. It's been a while since I've played, um, like a really shorter game. Stanley Parable might actually be the shortest one I've played recently. I miss short games. God damn it, I'm not doing this for four hours. Was this new? People were saying that this is updated, but, um, what was updated? It seems like it's the old, same old, right? I'm looking at my list right now on my other screen. Yeah, multiple people mentioned the game saying I'm not freaking. I'm sorry, man. I, if it wasn't four hours, I would do it for you. But four hours is. I'm sorry. Don't look. You heartless bastard! <laughs> Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? I want to play... Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. I want to play Fortnite. 
Yeah. Oh! Aha! Oh. Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? The S. Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower. Oh. Perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hell yeah. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Okay, this is the new part, right? Oh, that's sick. That's sick. Delilah? Delilah? Oh, wow. How did they get the... Ah, because I know Firewatch was also made in Unity, so I guess I made it easier, but... Damn. That's pretty sweet. It's been a long time since I've played Firewatch. A good number of years, at least. Five, six, seven? Just like the Stanley Parable. Oh, wow. Suddenly it's like Nostalgia City. Oh, no. No, 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 it can't be. What? It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly block it off. No, no. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that, that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh. oh thank heavens we avoided it. We're out <gasps> of the woods now, Stanley. Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm kind of excited. Okay, I think this will be just the thing. <gasps> Rocket League? Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. I'm the size of a ball. Oh my god. Okay, I so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Pass it okay, over. I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Oh, okay. Just just one second. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm going faster. Sweet. What team am I on? Does it matter? No. But I, I can't jump, though. I can't jump, because I use my jumps. Dude, I'm terrible at Rocket League. It's fun, though. Ooh. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Yes! Is it better than my miserable little story that I work so hard on? Stanley, I have a thought. And I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw adrenal pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes another ball. Damn right, narrator. In this yes. moment, I am oh, euphoric. Goodness, that really does feel amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls! Oh! Hold on, what are you doing? I fell! Ooh! Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. I didn't move, actually. You were the one who moved away from me. Oh, it's like someone's actually renovating the place. Oh! Oh god. This is like the horror all over again, but like actually intended to be horror kind of horror. Broken down building. 
with no sounds aside from my own footsteps. A lone light in the distance, and I'm back home. What? Is that like a... that looks like an audio program. Um... What is that part? There's a... Is that a window? Okay... I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. The end will never be the end, narrator. But he's right. Yeah, without him, we can't really move on. And it gets so scary. So quiet when he's not around. But he also needs me. Just like how we saw in the ending where we were out of the body and all that. We need each other. I need him, he needs me. Maybe even more than I need Bucky, God. <laughs>